Indeed. So, still no Dragon Shire. I don't think we've actually seen that yet uh, in HCC <laughs> China so far. Infernal Shrines, on the other hand, very common overall, but still not as loved as it is in some of the other regions. True. This time, though, coming in as our first map. In terms of win ratio, Soa actually taking the advantage there. It is one win to two losses compared to one win to three losses. Yeah, so it looks like Soa definitely did their homework here and chose a battleground that fits them very well and that might not fit their opponents that well because, as you said, the win ratio is definitely favoring Soa over Hot Lady. Now, can they continue this trend or is it time for Hot Lady to finally show what they're made of? We're going to find out here in game number one. Best of two played on a Malthale patch here with Malthale, of course, being banned himself. We're still going to have to wait another week or so, I guess for him to find his way into the competitive hot yeah. scene, but... Uh... Despite the best efforts of Wukong Gaming. <laughs> yeah, they tried really hard yesterday, yep. Even the rulers cannot stop death. <laughs> but we can, however, at least stop the light, as Uther is banned out first. In response, the Genji is removed by Soa. Yeah, very smart to, to start a draft like that. I think it, of course, leaves big playmakers like Anubarak and Dehaka open for the taking. And Hots Lady, they do not waste any time here. They immediately go for the gold mobility. The pressure that Dehaka can build up on larger maps like uh, Infernal Shrines is just nothing to be sneezed at. It's just a very, very solid pick all around. He's tanky. He's got the self-sustain, strong laner, gold mobility. He, yeah. He's just everything you could possibly want. It also helps that all of the objective points on this map have bushes next to them. So Dehaka, yes, great at joining in for those objective fights after soaking up a little bit more XP to give you that talent advantage that we will see so often. So uh, starting off a little bit more, uh, also very standard with the Anubarak. Will they follow up with a Li Ming or maybe something like a Grey Mane? It is the Grey Mane. The Grey Mane. Very, very solid hero overall. Strong wave clear. It looks like Hoss Lady. They're just giving comfort picks to Carlo here. They're a key player. We saw it in the pre-select screen. And uh, Arthas, as we said, he's not a common sight in China. But he offers so much, of course, on this battleground. Shrine control. Slowing multiple people in those choke points near the exits. It's just a fantastic combination also with Dehaka, I feel. Because... Slow, the slows from Arthas can really help the Haka land his Licky Sticky Tongue a little bit more easily. So, how do you like the synergy coming out here from Hot Lady, Tetra? I really like it. They've gone for the double global straight yep. away already, so that they have a lot of XP so compared to uh, currently what Soa have. They have the it, Arthas, who, other than the Cursed Bullet, is pretty good against the uh, Grey Mane in terms of defending against him. Second, he jumps into that Worgen form, attack speed is slowed, and you have a pretty rough time. So Grey Mane kind of has to stay in cocktail form for the poke potential. Falstad, good AoE on the uh, Punisher area as well. So True. overall, good composition from them so far, and we're seeing Soa hovering over a support ban because they get first pick on support. So it makes it basically impossible for Hot Lady to ban out something. Yeah, and a Karazine ban would definitely uh, be something that is limited to China for the most part because we, we talked about this yesterday as well. The Western regions, while, you know, Europe having a couple of good supports on Karazine like Bakery or Smexy, you know, it's still not as common to pick the Karazine as in China. So a ban here makes a lot more sense than it would make in the Western region. So... Really, really cool to see these slight variation coming out every now and then. Indeed. So, for Soa, a support for them could be uh, Rhaegar or Malfurion, something like that. Both would be acceptable. So, Hot Lady, then very unlikely going to ban another support out, like we said. Yeah. Versus, do what do they want to ban? Potentially a second tank, potentially uh... another global. Potentially, ETC could cover both those things, but... How much do they prioritize it? No, they ban out Sonya. Good shrine clear. Very yeah. nice. And I like the Sonya ban here too, because so far, Hot Lady haven't really drafted any reliable source of interrupts for her spin, for her whirlwind, right? Uh, that's oftentimes one of the bigger drawbacks when drafting an Arthas. He doesn't have the stun, the roots, or whatever else you need to lock down a Sonya and uh, make her a good focus target. So taking her out of the equation, also eliminating another strong soul laner that could potentially threaten Dehaka a little bit is definitely a wise choice. And uh, I think not m enough teams in China especially give enough credit and enough respect to the Sonya. 
Yeah, like Super Perfect Team very much give the respect to the Sonya, but they are the exception that proves every yeah. rule ever. Uh, <laughs> they are. But, uh, the Sonya is very solid, especially on this map. Like I said, the respect given to it very much like it in this. So instead, Ooh. we see Zarya now a support. There we go. So Rhaegar and Zarya empowering that Grey Mane. Okay, so now what do we make of this with Azaria here? Azaria, she has kind of fallen off. She has kind of disappeared without really any major reason because she wasn't really nerfed. She wasn't really changed in a way that other heroes were. What do you think is the reason? Why do so many teams not really pay a lot of attention to her anymore? Um, she is reasonably easy to play around, especially with all the single target CC and damage mm -hmm. that we're seeing nowadays. You can just avoid proccing her shields uh, as much as possible. And they are very high on cooldown as well. So if you just wait it out and then burst down Grey Main, you're going to have a really rough time. Expulsion Zone, it does have some zoning potential, but it's not the most impactful heroic in the game. However, with this area in the game, I wouldn't hate to see something like a D.Va or something along those Ooh. lines. Okay. I I'm all down for the D.Va. I mean, I think a lot of players where a lot of teams, once again, just like the Sonya, they, they don't really realize the full potential. And we saw her yeah. in, in Europe, we saw her at the mid-season brawl, getting just so much value. Yeah, this is definitely her best map. She gets huge area of effect, uh, uh, zone control. Instead though, it is Lunara. So they're going a bit safer this time, not taking the risk with the multiple front lines against Arthas. Instead, they take lots of back lines in the attempt to hope to kite and the attempt to hopefully not get blown up by Li Ming. And let's talk about Lunara a little bit, because she has done work yesterday. I think every game she was picked in, she won. Um, it's just such a reliable DPS source, because it is very easy to spread the poison. You just need to land your Q, or you need to alternate your uh, auto attacks to multiple targets, then you press W, and all of a sudden you're going to have tons of damage over time. While at the same time being, you know, fairly mobile, fairly easy for her to land and, excuse me, dodge those skill shots. Oh, you can look at the camera, you can look at us, ladies. No need to be shy. Oh, I see 2K t-shirts, I can't tell if that's the team or... <laughs> Or fans. I'm going to assume fans, because yay. Exactly. How do you like the Lunara texture? I already consider it to be probably one of the most underrated assassins in right, the game, right. even with how highly it's prioritized. I personally think it should be prioritized as a first or a second assassin, uh, first or second in terms of assassin priority. But you do still require a team to play around it. Like, it's a perfect substitute for the Valor, it's, if you want to make a ranged auto attacker, I would order Valor and then Lunara yeah. in that order. Okay, so all in all, I think we're going to have a really intense series uh, coming at us. I think both drafts look equally strong. I, it is really hard for me to, to uh, name a favorite here. I just like, you know, I like the Zarya. I, th I think she's underrepresented. I think she's undervalued. And especially for Shrine Control, her Explosion Zone can be the crucial factor that allows Soa to maybe get the advantage in terms of Skulls overall. But ladies and gentlemen, give it up for the two teams, Soa and their opponent's Hot Lady. Hype it up. Nice. As we load into the Infernal Shrine, spawning on the left-hand side. They were the underdogs last season, but this season they're looking to take more than one series. It is Soa <laughs> playing for them. We have Faye playing the playing the Rhaegar, Uncle G on the Zarya, uh, Tank Ovo on the Greymane, Spark BZ on the Anubarak, and Shy is playing the Ludara. And their opponents, the ladies in red, as I like to call them, they're looking extremely good. Why? On the Falstead, Pommy on that Malfurion, Lias on the Dhaka, we have Meng on Liming, and Carlo on his favorite hero on the Lich King Arthas. I do like that every single hero that this guy ends up picking, it just sounds like a terrible choice just due to his name. Why on the Falstad? <laughs> it's all about the inflection. It's about what he picks. He basically continues the trend of the former Easter roster with X and Y. Yeah, um, X, X, H, Y. Yeah. 
They had yeah, X. Like they they were called that because their names were too long and then just never changed <laughs> them back. I'm curious if this is the same case for him. It's only two letters. I did get a little bit confused at the mid-season brawl when uh, some of the casts were calling their old or full names, as if you will, yeah. like Lucian and Savage, and then there were people calling them X and Y. So I know. Uh, X and I, H, I tried excuse to me. explain it every yeah, yeah, yeah. time, but either way, appreciated. Whoa! Getting detonated. Well done, Arthur. Sport that very nice gank. All right. Well, Zarya, a hero that I personally was very excited about, definitely uh, not really showing up yet. Needs to wake up. I think it was Uncle G who died? Uh, it was Uncle G. Yes, yeah. No worries, buddy. I mean, First Blood in Heroes of the Storm is not the end of the world. So, I think especially when you play Hero League or Team League, uh, a lot of people tend to get overly aggressive, overly excited when a teammate of theirs is causing the First Blood. Because as you can see, it's not really a big deal. Unless, of course, it's the solo laner and you're losing XP because of it. But look at those ganks. Why showing up in the top lane here to help Leas and together Why? they take out Get the out beetle. Go body block! Oh no! Leas! <laughs> Leas body blocking Why there. But why it was able to escape? That was very nearly a horrible mistake. Do you think it was intentional so that Lunara I might actually get baited in because Arthur's right next to her? No way that was intentional. Okay. I think he thought he still had Dark Swarm activated and could pass through because there's no body blocking with Dark Swarm. Right, right. <laughs> True. Just, just mistakes were mistakes were made. No one died. It's all fine. Forgive and forget. Still, two kills going over to Hot's Lady already at this early stage in the game, using their globals and just good roaming and ganking to great effect. Faster, by the way, with Season Marksman, stacking that up, and now with the Hammer Gains for a little bit more stay. Yeah, uh, I really, really like the Healing Totem as well. I think a lot of Rhaegars tend to uh, neglect this talent in China, at least, because especially when you're fighting around those shrines, the consistent sustain it offers is just second to none, especially if you put it in a bush hidden from the enemy vision at first, so it doesn't really get destroyed by an AoE ability or an auto attack that quickly. Now, you can see that Soa, despite losing team members relatively early on, they're dominating so far in this first shrine phase, but look at the global presence, and here come the Haka and Falsen into the fray. Yeah, trying to drag Greymade back through the rest of the team. They've already killed oh off Zarya, my. focusing down onto Greymade. Arthas wading through, takes down another kill. And that is a dominant position for Hot's Lady, already with a full level lead at Ooh. the three minute mark. Well, the Hot's Ladies showed up. They used their global mobility in perfect synchrony. They used the Haka from the top lane, they let Falset fly from the bottom lane, and together they just smashed the Greymane and the rest of Soa, and they forced them out. And that is just a double win for them, because not only are they now going to get this first Punisher most likely, but also because of that double global, they were able to soak in a lot more. As you can see, one entire level is the lead in favor of Hot's Lady already. They're just, you know, executing their battle plan to the fullest right now. Yes, they are. They have full control over this map. They're still soaking the rest of the lanes, although they are being pushed up a bit. Bot lane getting yeah. pressured. Why can't do a huge amount about this? But at least they are trying. By the way, we have the return of the broccoli. Vengeful Roots coming in oh for my. the Malfurion so that you can get that extra tree and damage. It does now stack, so it's slightly <laughs> less yeah. terrible. It actually so gets stronger now. And they've also gone for the Straggling Vines. If you're going to lose Cleanse, that's the kind of talent you want to get in exchange. The 30% reduced healing from all sources on anyone rooted by the Gore Strangling Vines. Can we say that this game is now 100% vegan uh, approved? Um, no, because Greymane. Damn it. Well, <laughs> maybe Hunter. maybe Greymane doesn't uh, attack the broccoli because he's a carnivore. You know, maybe it's all psychological warfare. Maybe. Well, at least we have the vegan option. We're being <laughs> this game is inclusive now. It's all good. It's so cool, but you brought up a nice point there. This is, of course, the Malfeo patch. This is, of course, the new Malfre uh, Malfreyan, the newly reworked Malfreyan. And many people might still laugh at the broccoli, at the little trend coming yeah. out from the Entangling Roots. But, as you said, it now stacks up very nicely. Every basic attack this little fella is going to execute makes him more powerful. The only drawback, the biggest drawback of this ability, of this talent, is the low HP pool. So oftentimes, one ability, one AoE ability is going to be enough to severely damage it. Yeah, and let, let's compare the amount the tree end uh, damage increases compared to, let's say, false as season marksman. False as season marksman increases by one each time you get a stack, right? Yep, yep. 
Okay, the Treon, every time it auto attacks, and it attacks once per, uh, once per second, basically, for 10 seconds, it increases by 8 every single time it auto attacks. Mm -hmm. Meaning that if you are able to continuously spam it out and get it stacked up, you could get that thing to chunking range without too much difficulty. You also need to uh, view it from this perspective. In a 5 versus 5 team fight, the train is probably going to die very, very quickly, simply hmm. due to the fact that there is a lot of enemies around. But what about the situations where you catch someone off guard, where you catch someone isolated? Maybe your fight is 4 versus 2, 4 versus 3. In those situations, the train can actually deal a ter terrifying amount of damage. So you shouldn't always uh, see it from a perspective of full 5 from 5 team fights, but also there are many situations where you can catch someone, like that Zarya maybe, if she doesn't pay attention. Look at that, the Broccoli's on the march. This broccoli is starting to get stacked. The three out of units of value. It's going to take a couple shots as well. Like you said, not very powerful, but they're still able to get the kill using their heroics before Soma even hit their level 10. So, Hot's Lady able to get 10s and another Punisher. Dahaka still soaking bot lane. False end was thinking about going to soak mid lane. Right now, though, yep. it is left unattended. All right. Rug abilities now are available for both teams. This is time for Soa to potentially strike back, and they're all moving towards the top lane. It, you know, 24, 25, 26 skulls. That is still something that you can stop from happening, but you need to engage right now. Arthas, Carlo, he's the one to hold the front line. Trying to go for the back line here. That is uh, a new rank, but so far he's been stopped successfully. Yeah, he's got Sethrys for now. Leaping Strike to get Ludara out of damage. There is the Pacificon to get Arthas out of this. He's trying to pull back. Oh. The Explosion Zone is good, though. There's the Twilight Reef to try and turn it around. But Arthas still falls ancestral on Ludara. And it's the turnaround coming in from Soa. They're able to get two kills here. Uh, Meng on the Ming Li. He was too aggressive in there. He used his teleport to blink in aggressively, maybe trying to get a reset going here, but this is a very dangerous spot for Hotsley right now. They are so close to unlocking yet another Punisher, but they are just four skeletons short, and they also need to wait for Arthas and Li Ming to respawn. Now, Arthas is back, Li Ming will be in a second. They must not make the mistake of overcommitting before those two are back. But, however, the skeletons are stacking up very nicely for Soa. Expulsion Zone to zone them out in time is available. Let's see what they can do. Oh, Falstad getting oh very my. much chunk. He has to pull back, and as such, Soa will get their first Punisher of the game. That's going to be pushing it to the top lane. By the way, I read the talent wrong. The uh, root, sta the tree damage stacks when you land the root, not when it auto attacks. So it's good. it there takes go. a little bit, it's a little bit less super powerful than I thought it was, but it could still get some good damage off if he continues to land it. For now, Punisher jumps oh in. Goodness. Arthur's focused now. Gust having to be used to disengage. Yeah, that was a nice lead follow-up here by Lunara following her big brother, the Punisher, immediately after. But a nice disengaging gust here as well on the side of Hot's Lady. And during all of this, they had Elias on the Dehaka taking mercenary camps and soaking the side lanes. But, Soa, they're coming back swinging here. A couple of kills, a couple of structures, and they're back in the mix. Now tying it up in terms of global XP. Almost equal now, 13 against 13. 13 against 13, very shortly with Hot Lady. Gonna be hitting ever so slightly earlier, but so are making up for it with a bit of map control that they have due to people being busy in the top lane. They're gonna be able to steal away that Kazara camp nice. of Hot Lady. Nicely done indeed. They're gonna move down to the bot lane, clear up the bottom Kazara camp that was taken by Hot Lady by that sneaky, sneaky Dahaka. Indeed, now we see. False in the top lane still doing his thing, but of course that's the beauty about double global. You can send those heroes to a side lane without worrying too much about, you know, fighting or getting caught in a 4 versus 5. Because as long as the flight and the brush stock are up, you're always going to have your buddies at your side in time. Now another merc camp being taken by Soa in the middle. The Cocoon is such a big playmaker. We see level 13, by the way, for Lunara. We see the anti-magic shield, the greatest spell shield, by the way, which is so good against the likes of Li Ming, really shutting down her damage. And it's also great against, you know, the damage from Falstead, too. Indeed, the damage from Falstead is going to be good. Falstead going for very much an auto-attack favored build. He does have the boomerang, though, so exactly help out. Oh, Gust incoming. Let's see. The drag onto Rhaegar, oh trying to put it down. Huge. The Gust from behind, trapping against the wall. There's not a huge amount of towers. Cocoon is popped. Rhaegar already out of range, though. Oh, and why he falls? False set is no more in the mix. It's a four versus five right now. Uncle G in trouble, gets silenced, gets cleansed, and is he going to make it? Make try so hard, but he can't <laughs> get him. Oh, my God. 
And that is wow. a turnaround once again by Soa. The Twilight Dream landing, but it's the finishing shots that Hot Lady appeared to be missing. Lee Ming went super deep, hoping to get a dominant stack, but was yeah. not able to land the arcane missiles. So therefore, didn't get it and was picked off as well. A disaster for Hot Lady. They continue to own basically the entire map and continue to have control over the game, but they've lost the last two team fights in a row. Everything looked good at the beginning of that fight for Hot Slave. And Twilight Dream, as you said, connected against a lot of members from SOA. The fall set Gust was really good, knocked them into their own fort and tower line here. But the SOA roster just continues to be too tanky to take down. The greatest spell shoot from Lunara, the Anubarek, the Zarya applying additional support here as well with her shields. Rhaegar's answers will have been on point all the time. And SOA, they continue to maintain control over this game and over this shrine phase for now. They continue, like you said, they're holding the line for the moment, but the gust from above, can they make the play with this? The hacker coming in, moving in onto Greymane, who is cleansed out, oh turns around my. and destroys Carlo. Leas is focused down as well, disintegrate, gets Mafurian out of the cocoon, and but Leas still focused down, his adaptation. No, he's was not enough to save him. Now it is Y who is getting poisoned down Woo! and finished off by the Grey Maid who gets a lot of tower shots, but still survives. And so a dominant performance in this first game after a very shaky start, but an incredible comeback. I gotta say that Lunara, do you see the amount of damage she inflicts? And Malfurion used to be one of the better supports when it comes to dealing with damage over time. But even Malfurion can't handle all that split damage by Lunara. Combine that with the on-point expulsion zones by Zarya, the strong damage of her grenades as well, and the Greyman. He's completely neglected during all of those team fight, it seems. And they just can't kill them quickly enough. Li Ming, so far, not having all the impact that he wanted to and uh, Meng, and I think Falset as well. They just need to work on the way they approach those teamfights because so far, every single teamfight was initiated by a gust, but they never managed to get the follow-up kills. What would your thoughts on a tranquility for Malfurion have actually been? To be honest, I think with Malfurion's uh, Twilight Dream not really being as powerful as it used to be, it might be a more legitimate option. I still think though, that it might not be enough against the burst damage from Greymane. Zarya can also be very dangerous, but it is certainly worth considering in, you know, the one or the other instance. I, I actually... Oh, that wow. Oh, it one! Oh, I should always giving up too early. Yeah. This fire dying. Well, Dad, you're to survive. Leaving was not so lucky. She was blowed up. Exactly, and so are now. They're on the warpath. They're trying to get the first keep of the game. The cocoon goes down. It is on Carlo. Li Ming is dead. So no disintegrate to immediately pop it. The broccoli. It is a tough guy. It is a brave guy, but it falls at the very moment and it cannot stop Soa from taking this keep. And it looks like Hot's Lady, they were giving this up willingly because the Haka didn't even try to help the defense. I'm not sure if I agree with this call because trading a forward for a keep is normally never a good trade. But, you know. Yeah, I mean, they would... They wanted to try and get level 60, which they already had. So yeah, that's wrong, my, my bad. They, I guess they are committing to a level 25 at this point. They, yeah. They're giving up the keep, believing that the hacker is enough to defend it. They have two globals, so defending this lane isn't as much of a problem as it would be for, say, if so, or in the exact same situation. So this seems to be a commitment to getting to level 20 and taking the fights then with everything available, because they've been losing all the other fights, let's be honest. Yeah, as you said, it's just such a weird position that Hot Lady finds themselves in. They're going in as a slight favorite. They looked so good in the very first five minutes of the game, but now they're just getting outpushed, outrotated, and simply outclassed by Soa, who are just too stable for them to take down. And I think if you can't kill targets fast enough, Li Ming is gonna struggle in those teamfights because she's so dependent on early resets on her abilities, especially if you go for talents like Dominance that work so well with the resets. Falstad being sneaky with the split push. He was moving down, looking to maybe fly behind and go for a behind gust here, but yep. was not able to get it. Instead, moved back up. Second, he saw uh -oh. Soa retreating. Now, though, he needs to potentially use that fly as an escape mechanism, uh... assuming he doesn't get knocked up here, which he does. And that is what happens when you overextend. You lost vision. You commit yeah. to the fly, I would say. You need to get out of Absolutely. there. You don't take the risk of walking. The moment you see the entire enemy team vanish on the minimap, you take the nearest bush or you just fly right off 
from where you're standing and you just need to get out of here. I don't understand why Falstead was taking this unnecessary risk, but you also need to say, like, look at that clean kill as well. The amount of stun chains we saw by Soa, the amount or the way they prioritize oh. their abilities. Oh my goodness, hold on. That's nice. That is a good saving oh, grace. That was really good. Wonderful for Hot Sadie, able to even up the kill count there. Level 20 still about to be hit by Soa, but Hot Sadie not in the terrible position that they were in a couple seconds ago. Now yep. they could actively afford to at least poke onto this objective. They can't afford to take a straight fight because those level 20 talents are so good. Those storm tier talents. Yep. Arthur's though in a oh rough my. position. He's moved too far in. Can He's getting kill focused him? down and killed off. Now it is the hacker getting chased down Li Ming as is well. In the He's able to burrow to attempt to flee. Li Ming is in the cocoon. Can she teleport oh. out? The burrow is missed. Very good. He sees the brawl flashbacks. Volstad coming in from <laughs> below. He has returned, focusing down onto the Anub. Greymane still the back for another 18. So it's still four versus four for Jose. He's still backing up. Still not with that level 20. They need to soak. Oh. I have never seen an Arthas die this quickly. But the coordination and the way they used Expulsion Zone was just perfect. And once again, you see the weakness of the Malfree not being able to burst heal targets in need. That has always been the weakness of Malfree. And now with the rework, losing his initial heal, not really losing it, but uh, the initial healing from regrowth being weakened and the overall healing numbers not really as good as they used to be, you can really see that Arthas ends up falling immediately. But it was so well played by Soa too. It was a 4 versus 5 situation. They still came out on top and they still managed to get that puncher too. Soa now is in full attack mode. Dahaka soaking up for his team though. Level 20 about to be hit. Full retreat by Hot Sadie, pulling the Punisher as far back as possible. They know the keep's going to die, so they need to not take the fight near it. They pull back, and it's going to be a defense of the core. Dahaka has been back. Level 20 is available. Hey. They gust away one. Focus down the Punisher as quick as they can, but Li Ming is interrupted. She borrows away from Anubarak, though. Storm Shield onto the most of the members of Soa as the core begins to drop. They're trying to micro around it. Lunara is just too healthy at this it? point, and that is GG. Soa taking game number one. Wow, and they took it in very convincing fashion. And look at those happy faces here. I couldn't be more happier if I were them for sure. And they just knew that they did something that was not possible in phase number one. They haven't taken a single map off of anyone other than Kiss, which was admittedly an even weaker team than Soa. But in this new season, in phase two, Soa is a middle field team, maybe even more than that. They just impressed me so much. And all those three new players, they just added so nicely into that complete roster, Tetra. It's just incredible to see this team rise.